Hello. Uh, today we'll talk about the second topic uh, in immunology for multisystem one, which is the non-specific uh, barriers. So actually there are generally three lines of defense. As we said in the last lecture, there are first line, which is non-specific barriers. Then we have the second line, which as well, non-specific, but bad rules. While the third line, it is actually the true specific immune system. The first line is characterized by broad and the external for, and for external defenses. It have it, it include walls and channels. It it consists of majorly of the skin and the mucous membrane, and this considered consider to be the first non-specific uh, barriers. Then we have the second, the second non-specific barrier, which is actually as well broad, but it deals with the internal defenses. And in these cases, the battling uh, soldiers are the natural killer cells, actually, and the phagocytic white blood cells, which are the leukocytes. And these are innate and non-specific immunity. Then we have the third line, which is specific acquired immunity. And this actually the elite uh, trained units and it comprises majorly uh, uh, two cell types, which are the B cells and T cells. And you have as well the antibodies that share its part in the true immune system or the acquired or the adaptive immune system. So majorly that's a general the three lines of defense and general, general components of these uh, three lines of defense. So let's see as well a, a sketch, a diagrammatic sketch to show the component of the non-specific immunity. So we have the first line of defense, as, as we can see, it is the skin mucosa, the acid of the stomach, the tears of the, of the eye, and as well, a reflex action is the sneezing because, because you are expelling out some of the uh, pathogens. You have as well second line of defense, which comprises uh, uh, processes or mechanisms as well as uh, players uh, or patterns like the natural killer cells. You have a lot of protective uh, uh, proteins. Again, spirogens, you have complement. And as well, the processes including the fever, the inflammation, and the, the, uh, one of the very important process is the phagocytosis. Let's see uh, uh, how the, uh, what are the epithelium and what are the defined zones of immunity. So actually for this uh, uh, type of immunity, you are, you are dealing with inside versus outside, uh, mucosal versus interstitial regions. The exocrine uh, secretions as well, which is, uh, for example, the salivary, salivary or the sebaceous um, secretions. Uh, we're talking about the non-specific barriers. You have as well the urinogenital and the kidney. It shares its part in the uh, non-specific uh, immunity. You have the respiratory region. You have the synovia of the articulating joints. You have the blood-brain barrier. You have the eye with the tears. You have a germline. You have placenta. So all, all these regions have to be equipped by a mechanism for non-specific immunity. If we look closely into the zones uh, for different immune responses, you can see that skin marked with red is the first line of defense and it is a very impermeable bar barrier. While the mucosal membrane, which actually line the digestive uh, tract together with the urinogenital, the anus, the respiratory system, and the salivary gland, all regulate material transfer in and out of the body. And they are specialized to separate the physiological functions which, have, which occur internally from the external in environment. And they continuously flushed with a lot of mucopolysaccharides. Uh, Then you have the barrier, then you have the barrier membranes that um, protect very important um, uh, organs in, in our body, like the central nervous system and the eye. And they incorporate a very strong type of junction between cells called tight junction to regulate and the select material transfer 
to, uh, to this kind of tissue. Of course, this includes the uh, blood-brain uh, barrier. Finally, I have the circulatory system, and this circulatory system flushes all the organ and all the muscular tissue and all the organs to keep constant healthy environment around this organ and tissue. Let's talk about the skin. So the skin with its secretion and with with, with its harmless microbes, reduce a lot the invasion of pathogen. So the skin, as you know, consists of the surface, the outer surface of our uh, skin consists of a very dead and uh, dry and dead cells. And this is very important to prevent as well the sensation of a stimulus, a lot of sensation that might trigger the nervous system as well and provide a, a, a dead surface so that the any invader cannot interact and so cannot, uh, got internalized inside our body. So as well, the skin is protected by secretion from the sweat gland and the oily gland in our skin. And these secretions contain a lot of natural antibiotics, including lactic acid. And lactic acid have been found to inhibit a lot of growth of many bacteria and fungi. As well, the skin hosts a lot of harmless uh, microbial ecosystem, including at the oily sites, oily sites, the major oily sites in our body is the scalp, the face, the trunk, and as well the moist sites, um, moist sites uh, between toes and the crook of the elbow, and as well dry sites is the rest of the body. All these regions contain different proportion of uh, harmless microbes. So if these ecosystem, these harm, harmless uh, microbes, in these they produce secretion and they help to boost the first line of defense in the skin. And these secretion will inhibit a lot of a growth of a lot of pathogenic microbes. Also, the skin always carries a population of potentially harmful bacteria like Streptococcus and Staphylococcus. If we look closely into the structure of the uh, skin, you can, you can see that it, it, there are major uh, layers. There are the stratum conium, there are tight junctions, and of course, this is uh, underneath, there is, there is a mucus layer. <coughs> For the stratum uh, corneum, you can see that The stratum corneum actually separates the, our tissues from the external environment. And it's a very effective uh, protection. This stratum corneum labeled with the arrow, you can see it's a, it's a relatively uh, thick, occupies almost half of the total thickness of the skin, the stratum corneum. And it's a very effective uh, protection against a lot of things, including solvent, uh, bites, uh, UV radiation and and so on and so forth. You have as well at this uh, stratum corneum, you have the terminal kerato, keratinocytes, and they actually stratified the squamous epithelium that have been corneified in order to be dead and solid and uh, dry. Cells these in these cells they contain keratin filament, and they are actually a barrier of highly cross-linked insoluble uh, protein matrix, and this as well adds to the protection of our body. So here we can see the structure of the stratum corneum. So the shedding of the skin cast off a lot of bacteria. The hair follicle, the sebaceous glands, and uh, the sudiferous glands flush this uh, surface. Generally, the skin surface is around like maximum two, uh, uh, two uh, meter square. So common antigen-driven skin diseases include uh, uh, psoriasis and atopic dermatitis. These like two major types of diseases. They occur once the skin fails to some extent to do the protective uh, uh, function that it do. And you can see in the following uh, here, two uh, uh, figures showing the difference between these uh, two uh, conditions.
for the tight junctions, actually it's composed of epithelial proteins, arcillins, that's type of proteins, claudians and junction adhesion molecules. And they provide a tight seal at the blood uh, brain barrier. It's not only in the blood brain barrier, but it's highly expressed in blood brain barrier. And as well, these tight junction provide a route for Langerhans cells and actually Langerhans cells, as you can see from the figure, it's a type of engine presenting cells that perform an immune function within the skins. So they actually, they are type of uh, dendritic cells, which is, um, can capture the engine and represent it on its surface for the other elite immune uh, cells. And these Langer cells, you can see is embedded within the skin layer, okay? So there as well intra-epithelial T lymphocyte, as you can see, intra-epithelial T lymphocyte, that can release interferon gamma, interleukin-4, and interleukin-10 10, uh, 10 to disrupt the junction, okay? So these antigen-driven tight junction diseases, if there is a malfunction in this tight junction, a disease may occur. If you can see in the skin, if this, uh, tar if this um, uh, malfunction targeted the skin, you have these two conditions. While if this uh, uh, malfunction targeting the GI or the mucosal layer of the GI, you will have inflammatory bowel syndrome and Crohn's disease and ulcerative uh, colitis. And as you can see here, these are the two conditions that can arise if there is a malfunction in the uh, antigen-driven uh, tight junction uh, in the skin. So we'll talk now about the mucus layer. So actually the mucus layer, it separates between tissue and the system, systemic environment. So actually it is a dynamic protection because they provide fluid, uh, fluid flow and they have highly enriched uh, mat of microflora. So it is estimated that the mucosal surface area is around 400 meter squares. It exists in the intestine, it exists in the lung, and actually the acid mantle of the, um, uh, like for, for example, in the stomach, prevented the penetration of bacteria and virus, while the intestinal mucosa can be colonized with over then uh, 10 to the power 14 different type of bacteria of collectively of 500 different uh, species. So the largest bowl of macrophage actually is located in the intestinal wall, accompanied by natural killer, uh, natural killer T cells to manage these very bacterial stasis in the intestinal lumen. So you can see here, approximately 70% of all uh, lymphocytes are located in the region highlighted by the arrow, which is called lamina uh, propria, okay? So mucus antibacterial proteins, so mucus antibacterial proteins, and cellular action as well of the mucous membrane all cooperate to help against microbes. So the mucus secreted from this mucous membrane, of course it will trap a lot, trap a lot of uh, microbes either from entering the nose or the mouth. And this mucus is very important for, for, by having a, a very important antibacterial proteins like lysozyme and defensin. Lysozyme can kill bacteria by digesting its cell wall while defensin make holes in bacterial plasma uh, membrane. So while the cilia on the mucous membrane need, is very efficient in brushing the mucus with the trap uh, microbes and until they either been coughed outside of the body, coughed or sneezed or got swallowed. And if the microbes are swallowed, of course they will enter the stomach, which are the, the extreme acidity of the stomach, they will digest the protein. And as well, if they pass into the intestine, the, the, the bacteria which are harmless in the intestine can secrete substance that destroy the invading bacteria as well or fungi.
So in females, there is an extra layer as well of uh, uh, defense, which is the acidic secretion and the mucus that help protect the vagina. Generally, the fluids uh, released by our body, tears, urine, diarrhea, even diarrhea and vomit, is, it's a major mechanism to help to uh, uh, expel invaders. And that's our lecture for